This video is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at itpro.tv. All right, I can go ahead and add another printer if I want to. Uh, actually, I want to add two more printers because I want to show you guys some neat stuff. So I'm going to add two more printers. I'm going to add in, uh, let's see, I'll do another HP 2500. I'm going to call this the IT department printer one. I'm not going to share it. And I'm going to add another one. And this will be the IT department printer two. Now, IT department printer one was on my LPT one port. I'm going to say that this one is on LPT two. I've got two printers. And so I'm just attaching this other one to my second port. And I'll call this the IT department printer 2. There we go. All right. So there's my two printers right there, IT department printer 1 and IT department printer 2. And if I want to restrict that down to just the IT department, I can. Uh, whoops. See there, I clicked on regular properties instead of printer properties. I made the mistake I warned you guys about. And so I'll go under security here. I'm just going to remove all this mess and add in the IT department. I did it again, just like that. There we go. All right. So now I've got those two printers, one on LPT1, one on LPT2. If I share these out, my end users can see two different printers, and they can, can print to them, you know, pick and choose between the two printers that they want. But there's some neat features that are built in that we can take advantage of when we have printers on, on more than one port. Okay. Uh, for example, I can set up what's called printer pooling. Instead of seeing two printers like I've got right here, I can consolidate them into one printer. And when people print, it will round robin the jobs. It'll send one job to LPT1, it'll send the next job to LPT2, and the third job to LPT1, and it'll go back and forth. This is really cool if you're setting up like a, a lab at a, at a university or a high school or whatever, and you got a bunch of students, and maybe you have two or three printers. Here we can round robin on them so that we can be printing from multiple printers at once. The end users only see one printer, they print to it, and then it comes out on one of three different physical devices or, or however many we've got. All right. To do that, I don't actually need my second printer. What I can do is I can delete that second printer. Actually, I'm going to save it. I'll use it for something else later. But I, I can take IT department printer one, and I can pull up its printer properties. Now I've got it stuck in my head. I keep going to the wrong spot. I can pull up its printer properties. And under ports, you'll see that it's tied to LPT1. And I can turn on what's called printer pooling. Printer pooling is where I tell it. I've got more than one of these printers, and then I just tell it the ports. Now, notice how everything's grayed out here. When you pull up printer properties, it's not run as an administrator by default. So you have to jump back to the general tab and hit change properties. You have to enable that. Now I can go to ports, and I can turn on printer pooling. If you don't turn on printer pooling, when you click that second port, see how it just moves? It only lets you choose one port at a time. But when you turn on printer pooling, now you can check two ports. So I'm saying I've got two printers that are either identical or at least use the same driver on these two different ports. And so when somebody prints to this printer, round robin them. Send the print jobs to the two different printers, one after the other, whichever one is, is uh, available and free. All right. Now I'm going to share that out. And let me jump over to my sharing tab here. I'm going to share this. And I'm going to call it the IT department printer pool. All right. So now I know that this is my pool. When people print to it, it's going to round robin out these different printers. All right. So that one is now shared out and set up as the pool. It's very neat stuff. The other printer, though, it's a dedicated printer, and it's just attached to LPT2 right now. I might want to convert that into a pool also, right? Uh, right now, it's called the IT department printer. But you know, let's do let's do some fun stuff here. 
I'm going to configure that one to be a pool also. Let me, let me rename this one. Um, actually, let me rename both of them so I can keep this all straight. The first printer, I gave it share name, the appropriate name, but I didn't give the printer itself the appropriate name. So I'm going to call it the IT department printer pool. There we go. Oh, shoot. When you rename it, it drops the share. So let me, well, let me go back in and fix that. I <laughs> keep going. You know, normally I'm really good about it, but now that I told you guys not to do it, it's like stuck in my head and I'm constantly going to the wrong properties. All right, here we go. So I'm going to call this the IT department printer pool. It's going to lose its share, so I'll go and reshare it. And oh, actually, it did keep it shared, didn't it? Perfect. OK. I'm going to rename this one. I'm going to call this one the executive printer pool. All right. So maybe you've got like your CEO and your CIO and those kind of people. And they want to be able to print, but they don't want to wait on other people. When they print, they want their print jobs to come out immediately. So what we can do. is on their printer pool, we can set up what's called a priority. Printer priorities determine how fast a print job makes it to the front of the queue. And when we go in, all printers have a default priority assigned to them. So I'm just going to go in here and turn on that printer pooling. There we go. So now it's a printer pool also tied to those two ports. And let me just go to the sharing tab, and I'm going to share it out as the executive printer pool. All right, but I'm going to go to the advanced tab. And under advanced, right here, you have your priority. Now, priority is a really neat thing. You can define in here how much weight this print job should get. And the higher the number, the better. I'll assign this one a 10. All right, so the other printer has a value of 1. This one has a printer of 10, or a, a value of 10. When I print to this device, the CEOs are going to get a higher priority. So they're going to jump to the front of the line. There could be 20 print jobs waiting on the IT uh, department printer pool. But when an executive prints, they'll jump to the very front of the line. Now, you can't stop a print job that's already in progress, right? It would, it would ruin the job. So if somebody's already printing, that's going to finish. But the very next person in line would be the executive. The printer priority lets us do that. Let's us specify, hey, this person can jump in line. All right. There's some other neat things in here. You'll see like uh, uh, whether this printer is always available or available in a certain schedule. I might have a printer for the students, and I only want that to be available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. while class is running. Right? And if they're there after class hours, don't allow them to print. So you've got that option. You can configure that too. Uh, you've also got uh, you know, when you want to print. Do you start printing as soon as you receive the first page, or do you wait till you get the whole job? I prefer to wait till I get the whole job because I can ensure that it's not corrupted. But if it's a big document, you might wait a while before you even print the very first page. So if you print large documents, you can get a head start if you start printing immediately, which is the default. All right. Now, if you're doing printer pooling, with printer pooling, your job could come out any number of printers. I, I've got this set up for two printers right now. So the print job could come out. LPT1 or out LPT2, it could end up on two different printers. So how do people find their print jobs? One good way to do that is with a separator page. If we go into separator page, you can specify a separator page. And Microsoft has several you can download. And there's a few buried on the hard drive somewhere. I don't know if I can find any of them. Um, uh, well, here's a PCL, PostScript. Uh, I think I set that up as a PCL printer, so I'll pick PCL. You need to pick the appropriate one for your driver. PCL is the printer control language. PS is PostScript. When you load a printer driver, it'll use one of those languages, and you just pick the right one. I'm pretty sure I picked the PCL one. I'll define that. And when you set it, that separator page will have the username and the name of the document. So when these print jobs come out, they can find their, their document, who it belongs to. So no longer do we have to guess, hey, who was it that printed this? It's right there on the separator page. Now, if you print a lot of single page documents, the separator page can waste a lot of paper. But if you print bigger documents, it can be handy to keep track of this. 
All right. Now, once that's done, I've now got the IT department. Uh, I thought I renamed that. Let me refresh. I could have swore I renamed that. Yeah, executive printer pool. Apparently, it didn't rename the, or it just hasn't updated on the main screen there. But uh, uh, so I've got the executive printer pool, and I've got the IT department printer pool, and they're available. People can browse over the network and find them. <laughs>